Hey everybody, it's me, Super Paul Games. Welcome back to When I Rule the World. I am with my very lovely and talented co-host, Lauren. If you'd like to see her videos, there should be a link in the description for that and the game. Hi, Lauren. <laughs> Hello, Paul. Did you like that sexy voice I did for you? Oh, oh my gosh, I'm so turned on right now. You're welcome. <laughs> I discover an engine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did! Look at that, everybody! She's flustered! Oh, my voice is so sexy! <laughs> Alright, whenever you're ready. No rush, no rush. You know. I can't help it, she can't control herself. Oh. <laughs> I what? discover an entertaining thing when I open the paper. The total absence of any article headings using the word world feels very disquieting, like something's fundamentally wrong. But of course, since this original paper is to be expected, most of the stories about local pensioners, policemen, and primary schoolers, blah, blah, blah. You're right. This has got to be English, because pensioners is not a word that's used very often in my country. Told you. Well done. Always right. I don't know about that, but please continue. Investigating the classified ads, I discovered there's quite a few of... <laughs> Quite a few numbers of tutors in the area. Ooh, I can have some fun times with those. Some of them have taken out big box ads, but many of them are just plain text listings. There. A simple text ad offering private history or geog geography tuition, either in your home ooh, or on Summit Street in the next town. Summit Street? Hmm. Sounds like a prostitute. What clinches is it that actually <laughs> says clinches? <laughs> I'm laughing Fine. about... Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Oh. I was ahead of you. I just read the whole thing before you. I'm sorry. <laughs> right to Ellis at 217A Summit Street. I like she's like, what makes me think it's Ellis? Or Elitis? It's because it says right to Elitis. Well, good job, <laughs> Sherlock. Glad you solved that mystery. My heart rate seems to just got... It seems to have, like, tripled. And... It's S. He's still around, and I have a chance to meet him. Hmm. The only problem is when. Wait, wait, one second. So, he has been avoiding her, and he's still fucking other girls. Is that what's, what's coming uh, across there? Well, either he's a part of the agency, or he's a creep who has his way with underage girls and tells them, you're going to be queen of the world, now let me touch your vagina parts. Not sure which. Mm. I like her hair. I like her blue hair, though. I like how you get distracted by that. I know! I was like, her hair's really blue. Oh my god, it's so pretty. No. <clears throat> I have to go see him. I have a street address, but it's a couple of hours travel. And my mother wouldn't want me making this kind of journey on my own. Really? Your mom wouldn't want you to visit this really creepy teacher who lives in another town? Oh, he's so nice, though. He cleans up after. Yeah. Which means I'm gonna... <laughs> I'm going to have to make the trip without her knowing. I gulp. <laughs> That's my little gulp. Do you like that? You're very, very good performing. I can't wait for your Oscar. <laughs> oh, Best visual you. novel reading of the year, Lauren for I gulp. <laughs> oh, I just beat you out for it, so. Damn. So, Give me my gulping. Oscar. <laughs> I've never had to disobey her on something like this before. No, a being. Are you disobeying me up there? I have a sixth sense for that. Oh, yeah, you have a sixth sense for everything, don't you, mother? Don't leave me like your dad did. Oh. Where's my bikini? Well, it's not exactly disobedience, since she, she hasn't actually uh, specifically forbidden it. Forbidden it? Right. <laughs> that was my rationale in school. When I was in high school, I realized if you don't ask, they can't say no. So I wanted to ask, and I just do whatever I wanted anyway. <laughs> there you go, kids. Life lessons that from Super Paul Games. Yeah, gotta love those. I tried to rationalize it, but I know I'm not convincing myself. She wouldn't want me going, and I know that. But I have to find out what the agency are up to, what Ellis found out. So I have to make the journey at a time when she's not here. When or where will it be? I never leave. It's less than a week before an opportunity presents itself. I'm out to get tampons! Are you sure you'll be okay at home, honey? Yes, mother. 
It's not really a problem for me to hire a babysitter, you know. She's 16. Mother, I'm 16. I suppose so. Well, I'll make sure to get you a phone number at the hotel that you can call if you have any problems. Apparently, I'm a prostitute. If you need anything at all, okay? Yes, Mother. It'll be fine. I met him on the internet. Maybe he'll be new, your new daddy. Sugar daddy. It's quite a coincidence for my mother to go away for the weekend, just days after I needed an opportunity to travel secretly. Normally, I wouldn't think twice about attributing to the agency, but this journey is basically out of distrust for the agency. Do you think I look fat? Do you think he'll make love to me, little daughter? Shut up! Get out of here! I'm trying to speak to myself like a crazy person. Maybe they're arranging things so that I can satisfy my curiosity, she has satisfied something alright, and come back with renewed commitment to the cause. I hope my internet date satisfies my vagina zone! <laughs> that could well be it. Whatever the reason though, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for his kisses. <laughs> I start to pack a bag. Are you packing a bag up there? I hear a lot of noise. That's not the bag. I'm hoping that when she sees he's made an effort to come out and see me, Ellis will be willing to explain the details of what he found out. So I pack a notebook and pens. I think there might be enough to explain that it'd be worth me staying overnight at Ellis's place. Whoa! So this took a different turn. Yeah. So I pack a change of clothes oh. and a towel to clean myself up, as well as toiletries and so on. So what's toiletries? Is that like toilet paper? Yeah, toiletries is like uh like soap, toothbrush, little hairbrush. Oh, little... A toothbrush? Have you seen my toothbrush? <laughs> no, I haven't seen your bloody toothbrush. All your hand towels. Isn't that a little much? She's 16 years old. She shows up at her professor's place, tutor's place, and like I brought a toothbrush. I thought we're staying at. Oh dear God! I thought we're staying a night at Ellis's. It's very exciting. Oh God. Oh, she's blushing. I have. Oh my gosh! I have pleasant <laughs> dreams that night. Wet dreams. I sit anxiously for school the next day. I go straight home. Wait, you, you didn't even talk to me at school. Sorry. What? What are you even doing here? That's what he said. Is you were leaving the school. Mm. What if he's actually his son? Wouldn't that be ironic? I go straight home as mother asked me to. She's wanting to leave about an hour after school ends. I'm off to get my vagina filled. Okay, darling, here's the number where I'm staying at the hotel. Thanks, mother. If anything comes up, I hope something comes up for me tonight. Anything at all, you know you can call me. Yes, mother. Are you sure you'll be home all right? I'll be fine, really. Alright, darling. Well, I have to go now. You can shut your gob. Have a nice time. She stops in the door and calls back at me. Selena, take care, my dear. And she's finally gone. Soon, so will I be. I've decided to wait a little before I leave, in case Mother's forgotten something. I try to pass the time by doing my homework. It's really hard to concentrate. So many wet dreams. My mind is just full of thoughts of Ellis. Finally, the 60 minutes that I've set myself are up. I can go. I collect together some food and drink for the journey, putting it in my bag with a final look around to make sure I've not forgotten anything. Oh, condoms! And I'm off. As a 20 minute walk to the rail station. Yeah, this is English. I could have got a bus and after 10 minutes I'm washing my head. But I keep walking. I'm quite nervous as I approach the station, although I go into a city centre on my own from time to time. Travelling to a different town is another matter entirely. I've only been to the station twice before, and both times were years ago with my mum. I've never had to buy a ticket myself before. The station is scary. Is that how you get to Hogwarts? That actually looks a bit like King's Cross Station, yeah. which is the Hogwarts station. That's what I'm saying. Wow, well done. Clap, clap, clap. Thank you. Is a huge room with lots of people and smells and noise. I just stand there frightened to move for what feels like half an hour. The thought of Ellis spurs me on. I find a ticket desk and nervously stumble through the conversation with the man behind it. 
It doesn't help, but I don't know where I'm going to be coming back tonight or tomorrow. <laughs> what? <laughs> She's like, I don't know how long I'm going to stay with my former tutor. But in the end, I have to hand over some money and get a small piece of cardboard in return. The man helpfully tells me that the next train leaves in about 20 minutes and where to wait. Walking around the place seems to take an age, but I reach the identified platform and sit down, feeling tense and drained. Oddly though, I don't feel scared of the crowds because I know the agency are watching me. And with the great plans they have for me, they, they won't let anything happen to me, even if they don't approve of this trip. It's a weird kind of reassurance, but very comforting nonetheless. I don't think I could cope if I didn't have the security. After some time, the train pulls in with lots of screaming brakes and incomprehensible, incomprehensible announcements. The few other people who have been waiting for it walk up to it as soon as it stops and climb in, and I follow them. Yeah. No. Oh, that was a bit weird. I find myself a seat with nobody else around and settle down. I have no idea how long the journey will be. Is that opposed to a seat someone else is already sitting in? I sit on his lap. You I do, do you? I bet she sit on Alice's lap. I bet she did. She enjoyed it quite a bit. <sighs> it's nice to be away from the noise of the station, but as the train pulls away, it's very scary to think I'm leaving my hometown on my own for the first time. I think if you're 16 years old, it's a good idea to go on a train to a place you don't know, where a teacher you haven't seen forever lives and isn't expecting you. That seems like a good life decision. That's how I want to meet Alice for the first time. Well, technically it would be the second time, right? <laughs> the memory has a calming effect on me. That's how English people actually laugh. They go, ha oh. <laughs> I remember that day so clearly. Mother introduced me to him. Oh dear, it's gonna Selena, get dirty. Selena, this is Alitus. Who's going to help you with your history and geography? I chose him because of his luxurious hair. It sure is luxurious. I wasn't impressed with him then, first time I saw him. What I know, th what I now think of him is charming and confident face. Seemed arrogant to me at the time. Why did I have to have more lessons on this stuff? It's already so boring, the lessons I have it at school. The first hints of a very special message he had for me were that first evening when he was trying to persuade me to study. I'm glad that sentence ended like that. <laughs> I don't know why his hand is in his pocket like the. He's readjusting, ain't he? <laughs> My mum said I had great potential, and he said... If you could hear me facepalm, you would have heard that there. Uh, yeah, y y yes, Selena, you have immense potential, far more than you think. You have a unique future spread out ahead of you. My mother naively agreed, completely unaware of how literally... He was... how literal he was speaking. But I can't blame her too much. I was just... this is oblivious. They managed to get him to agree that he could come and teach me every Monday. The next week he repeated a few times that I was special or that I had a unique future ahead of me. I think my mother just thought he was being encouraging. At first I was hostile, but then I started to wonder if he was hinting at something else. It was his third visit which changed my life. We sat down at the dinner table and he talked about what we'd been studying at school. Why do I care about what some Russians did years and years ago? Smile enigmatically. You think politicians are boring, right? Yeah, completely. What about spies? Spies? Yeah, the politicians only decide what to do because the people gather information for them. Secret agents pretend to live normal lives while all the time covertly reporting back to their masters. And the information they sent the politicians couldn't be plainly spelled out, it had to be hidden. He looked at me intensely when he said hidden. I wondered why. Just imagine, if their enemies were able to read the information, they'd be lost. Their plans would be compromised and their enemies would find out how much they knew. So they had to find ways of hiding messages. They put them in little capsules and put them up their buttholes and stuff like that. He went on to teach me about methods that spies would use to hide their information up their buttholes <coughs> and so forth and so forth. And seemingly inconspicuous communications. I'm saying that word because I can. I was interested despite himself. Despite myself, not himself. 
Then at the end of the lesson, he said the words I'll never forget. Can I put something in your butthole? I mean, you could never tell when someone around you might be a secret agent, but you could look for the hidden messages and find them if you know the right way to look. His smile and the intense gaze of his orange eyes made me sure that he was trying to tell me something beyond his words. The next thing he said confirmed it. Now, why don't you have a look at the sheet over the coming week, and next time we see you, we can see what you think. What would he say have a look at? If there were, hadn't been a secret message, if it had been just homework, he could have said, try these questions or do this work. No, no, he was trying to tell me to look for a secret message. I, I just knew it. I, I, oh, okay, okay. That night, I officially studied my homework sheet he'd given me. On the surface, it seemed to just be so... Some essay suggestions and pointers to the relevant bits in my note textbooks. But I knew that there had been more to it than that. I tried a few times and different techniques uh, he'd uh, taught me. And uh, I thought up some of my own variations. And sure enough, picking out certain letters from the sheet of paper he'd given me a yielded message. You'll rule. Uncertain of what it meant, I decided to look around the pages and questions in my textbooks. I don't know why I did it, because I hadn't yet have heard of this agency who have control over so much of the world already. But I'm very glad I did, because starting the paragraph referred to by Ellis, she, the sheet he'd referred me to, and choosing every 19th word on that page, I found the agency will make it so. How lucky! was it that I paid so much attention to the events around me? The attentiveness, the hints and implications would stand me in good stead later. I could immediately infer quite a lot of what I had known to be true. The agency would clearly agree with secret agents like Ellis had been discussing with me, and the first message told me that I was going to be instructed as ruler over how much I don't quite know yet. They were, <laughs> they were benevolent. And they wouldn't have told me this. They were powerful because the message was stated differently, not the agency hoped to make it so. And Ellis was the agent chosen to come to teach me. And of course, I could tell they already had persuasive reach because they'd been able to plant this message in the history textbook that all the school used. I couldn't wait for the next time I saw Ellis to find out confirmation. The next time he visited, he didn't state anything definite. Remembering how he avoided coming out and saying anything clear, I did the same. I asked him several subtle questions with double meaning, seemingly about whether we were studying and, you know, the group, the agency, what, what he'd show me the existence of. From his smile, he answered, I knew he was answering about the agency also. It was a week later when I mentioned the agency. <laughs> uh, Explicitly? There you go. It took a bit of work to work myself up to, but I managed to bring myself to ask. Ellis, how much will I rule over? What? I'm sorry? In this great unique future I have, how much will I be in command of? He sat on speaking me for a moment, no doubt wondering how much was safe to say, then he said, Well, how much would you like to command? Uh, how much would be good? Well, it would be great if the whole world could be united. No more wars, all under one ruler. Smile. He just smiled back at me and said, Yeah, wanted it. I could barely contain my excitement. I think she's foaming at the mouth because of that. I feel happy. <laughs> oh, she's got rabies. <laughs> oh, God, not again. I oh, really? Will I be the ruler of the entire world? I'm sure you could achieve anything you set your mind to. Now, this piece of homework was... I wasn't going to be diverted. That's wonderful, but how will it happen? And when? And how How long do I have to wait for? Well, well, now, you should probably expect to finish school before you get to indulge your ambition too much. Although the world has seen teenage rulers in the past, but I don't think you're any Alexander the Great. Over the entire world? I don't think the whole world would have, would have like, united before. No, 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 you're right. It hasn't. That's never happened. And it would be quite an achievement if it were to be. So when the agency institute me as a ruler, I'll be the first. <laughs> wow. 
that's quite an ambition you got there, uh, young lady. It's only because of what you've told me. Uh, what? I, I did? Of course you did. That hidden message in the eight. <laughs> I'm just so flustered by you. I just can't take it. In the assignment from last week. Would you, you like me. to take it? Sure. I smiled happily and said softly. That's you, I think. Oh no, that's me. I found it. I recall that you seemed to blush slightly in a rather attractive way. Ooh, I like that. He replied, not meeting my eyes. He's got both hands in his pockets now. A hidden message in last week's homework? Yeah, and one in the textbook. About the way I'm going to become the ruler of the world. He looked at me with an expression I couldn't read and said faintly, uh... So you say I should wait and finish at school before this all happens? Uh... Yeah, 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 that would be a sensible plan. So that you can be fully trained for when the, uh... The agency? Yeah, the agency raised you to power. And if they should manage to make things happen faster, then, uh, so much the better. Yes! From then on, he talked about the agency more openly. He didn't give me too much information. I got the impression that there was a lot planning the agency were going to be doing. I didn't need to know the details. Given my current suspicions, I should have paid more attention to that. But at the time, I was obsessively excited with Ellis and the news he brought. <laughs> Big surprise. <laughs> oh, no. My mother commented on it, and I that I was looking happier, and especially on the days when Ellis came around. And everything went well until my mother decided at the end that the term that he didn't, she didn't want to keep paying a tutor since I'd been taking so much more interest in school. I was very sad to have my final lesson with Ellis, but he told me that if he had, if it had been a fun time, not, oh, it had been a fun time and not to worry about it too much. Of course I wouldn't worry too much about anything, although I was sad to see him go I'd discover the agency were looking out for me. Looking back on it now, I realize that I love him. <laughs> Why didn't I see it before? Oh god, she's psycho. For all that he did for me, for all that he taught me. His wonderful manner and confident way of speaking. Is that how you get a woman? By confidently speaking? Oh, it got me in bed. I used to hang on to every word he would say. When he walked into the room and everything became brighter. It was so clear to me now. Ellis, I love you. And I want you to tell me the truth about what happened with you in the agency. You know what, on that cliffhanger, this is where we're going to end it. As Creepy Girl goes to see her tutor and profess her love. Thank you so much, Lauren, for joining me on this. Ah, uh, thanks. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.